there are things that are going on now that, to great extremes that have not existed since the 1930 to 45 period. Reality is reality. A lot of people say they want to fight what reality is. Stop thinking about it being differently. Just understand, like, why did that thing happen to me? And how do I put it in perspective? It's like nature doesn't care about you. It cares about the universe. And so when you have those experiences, just understand how reality works and also how do you approach it better. That's smart. I so I think pain is the best teacher. The greatest pains are losing people that I love the most, which then gets me to reflect on the arc of life and what it's all like. Can we be healthy and strong? And what do we need to do? Once you cross a certain line, there's no coming back. The fear and the understanding that where this will lead will be devastating. You need the fear. You can't give people necessarily empathy or love. You know, we could say, oh, they should care about the other person. Whatever success I had came more from my knowing how to deal with my not knowing than from anything I knew. What you know in your head is only a small percentage of what the important things and the right things to know is. And so to be able to go outside of one's head and to take in the best of the best of the best, wherever it comes, and then use that to make decisions. And all of that came from that painful, very painful mistake. Life is like an adventure. I mean, if you knew everything, it wouldn't be nearly as good. So the ambiguity is part of it. It's part of the game. It's just the way it is and then experience that and to know how to deal with ambiguity because the same rules apply you know feel it feel it what's it like how does it feel where are the pulls to how do you learn how do you learn how to approach it what's it like speak to others who have been in there in that spot before taste it our preferences change you know as you as you're going through all those things so you feel it out you learn about it you go to the things that you feel the pull toward. There is a subliminal mind that we have, and there's a conscious mind. Freud discovered that there's a subliminal mind. And in that subliminal mind, we don't see it because it's not conscious, but it has a big effect. And so feelings and those things are coming through that subliminal mind, and it really has a big control. And then there's a conscious logical mind for everybody. And in your mind, they're like everybody's mind. There are these kind of two minds that are working. But in any case, to reconcile feelings with thoughts, to recognize feelings with logic and align them, like each has to double check for me. The most important things in life for me are inspiration, love, what is it about? I mean, what are you doing it for? But at the same time, to be able to get their logic and be able to express oneself in algorithms or so is a good thing. So when they're aligned, it's kind of a double check and it works at both levels. So I think that's most important. The greatest problem of mankind, I believe, is people having opinions that they're stuck on because it prevents them from resolving it, uh, from moving forward, to finding the best answer. Everybody's arguing over everything. It's almost like they're killing each other. And when the causes that you're behind are more important to you and others than the system, the system is in jeopardy. Are you just literally going to go fight? Or will we have protocols for having thoughtful disagreements and getting past them? What do you need to be successful? It's all I had when I grow up was parents who loved me and took care of me. I went to a public school and I came out to a world in which there was equal opportunity. Those are the only things you need. So there are a lot of ways you can measure whether there's equal opportunity, but I don't even know we can agree that we should have equal opportunity. Once you start to realize that deferred gratification 
is going to make you better. And you start to count, count, and you say, how many days, weeks, months, or years can I live if I don't have money come in? I know so many people who don't earn much, but are there. Because if you start to think about what it is that it costs you to live in terms of, let's say, the basics. I think most people can get themselves in a position where they're net positive. But if you've got money, you can help people a lot in a lot of different ways, which is thrilling. The most common mistake of investing, thinking that the investment that did good is a good investment. Quite often, those markets that did really, really well became more expensive. And everybody, smart money, is all the time comparing them and competing. So what happens is the naive money buys the thing that was hot. So I would say diversify. All investments compete. And it's not easy to tell whether one investment is better than the other. Because if people could do that, life would be easy and everybody would make a ton of money. Like we spend hundreds of millions of dollars each year on research to try to give us an edge. Now you've got to compete with us. So uh, competing in the markets is more difficult than competing in the Olympics. But diversification will reduce your risk without uh, reducing your return. So if you know how to diversify well, that's critical. So I would say, again, have great humility about what you don't know. Don't buy the thing that was hot just because you think it's hot. And then know how to diversify well. That Those would be the most important things I can say. The emotions are going to cause you to doubt yourself. And plus, it brings you stress, all of that. So you have to execute a game plan that's very well thought out. Then over time, you start to develop some better instincts. Like if you're excited and you're going along, be scared. If you're doing something you're really worried about and, and nobody else is doing it, maybe good. Don't be dissuaded. See, the markets are very different than consensus decision making. It's counter consensus because the consensus is built into the price. Right. So if everybody loves something, it's expensive. And if everybody hates something, it's cheap. You have to start to develop some of those instincts or a game plan. And what, what financial advice would you give to millennials? Pay attention to the feedback you get from the realities you encounter. You know, pain plus reflection. <laughs> you will get the pain. Pay attention to it. Listen to it because you're going to get the pain. Can you make the thing work over and over and can you hold on to it and so on? Yeah, because when you have to do it on an ongoing basis, regularly, that's the test of talent and that's part. Life is a journey, an adventure that is an art and to know how to play that well, to have principles that you believe in and that you related to that is knowing how to deal with what you don't know is more important than anything you know. And that I think the most important thing in life is meaningful work and meaningful relationships. If you love your work and you have a passion that you're pursuing like you do, and you have meaningful relationships, either in that work or beyond that work, there's nothing richer. You can't get a better life.